are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. All right, so I got the forks put back together. Okay, so I filled them up with the oil and then I bled them. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so you want to do that till no more bubbles come out. Then I put everything back in and I hand tighten the caps till the O-ring's down in there. Now, if your forks have uh, these boots, if they're conventional forks, there'll be a front side and a back side. Uh, the back side will have drain holes in it. And so you want to make sure you put them on so the drain holes are facing towards the rear of the bike. And then they have these little retaining uh, loops here. Put those on so that the screw to tighten them, oops, the screw to tighten them will be facing out towards the sides of the bike so you can get at it once you put the forks on. But if you, if you have these retaining uh, or these boots here, um, you need to put those on before you put the, the forks back in. Otherwise you won't be able to get them on. Okay, uh, other things here, um, grab this. This is my little uh, Motion Pro syringe. And the way this works is you, you fill up the uh, fork with oil and then you bleed it. And then it's hard to see, but this has numbers on it. So my service manual says to set the oil height with the no spring in, with the fork fully collapsed to be 126 uh, millimeters from the top. So you set this little clamp on here at 126 uh, millimeters and you put this down in the fork tube after you've filled it and bled it and then extract the syringe and it will suck all the oil out and get it, <coughs> excuse me, get it exactly to that level of 126 millimeters from the top. Uh, this will work for little bikes, big bikes, whatever. It's a pretty handy tool to have. Um, <coughs> now on uh, this bike, if you have a KLX, the stock oil says approximately 240 milli milliliters, 126 millimeters from the top, fully compressed, no spring, and after you've bled it, um, and it wants you to use uh, eight uh, SS8 uh, oil. Uh, I'm using five weight because I have the custom valving in here, but um, you want to check what your service manual says to put in. If you use heavier oil, your forks will be stiffer. If you use thinner oil, uh, your forks will be softer, generally speaking. The oil affects like the bottom third of the travel. All right, so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to get these put back in the triple clamp and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, so I got the uh, forks slid up in here. Okay. And you know, these pieces down here rotate left and right. We'll get all that aligned later. But right now, I pushed them up through. Okay. <clears throat> and up here, you can see where the fork cap bolt goes in. There's that line right there. See that line? Okay, that's the end of the tube. I have that pushed up above the triple clamp. And then. I have tightened the lower pinch bolt only. These are loose right here. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten the fork caps and torque them to spec. And remember, if you have these bolts tight, you won't be able to do that. So once you push everything up through, tighten the lower pinch bolt to hold them in place, then do your fork caps to torque. And then the next thing we'll do is I'll I'll loosen these and I'll slide these up and down. Now, between the top of the triple clamp and that line there, okay, you want them even on both sides. <clears throat> so I use uh, little digital calipers to measure them. And anywhere between three and five millimeters of the fork tube poking up from the base of the triple clamp to that line, once you have this sealed up, uh, generally should be fine. Okay, if you push them up higher, you're going to be lowering the front end. All right, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to torque the uh, fork caps, and then I'm going to set these up in here so that they're poking up through the top in even amount. Once I've got that done, I'll torque this bolt to spec, and then I'll leave this one loose because that's going to come into play later when we align everything. Okay, I'll be back. 
All right, so I got these aligned on each side. They're exactly the same bit poking up from the triple clamp. Uh, these bolts are still loose, all right, right here. Uh, my service manual says put some medium strength Loctite on them. So that's what I'm doing. I got some blue Loctite there. All right, so what's gonna happen next is you're going to tighten these top bolts to torque, okay? And then we're gonna loosen the lower ones so they're really loose. And then from there, we're gonna proceed to uh, putting the front tire back on first and aligning things. All right, so yeah, at this stage, your uh, forks are pushed up through. They're even on both sides. Right now, the lower bolts are still tight. I'm about to tighten the top ones to torque. Then I'm gonna loosen the lower ones and then put the wheel back on. Okay, before we uh, get to the front tire, I forgot, we gotta put our caliper back on here. Okay, so this is the front brake caliper. All right, now it goes on, there's this plate here. This is the actual caliper that goes behind this piece of the fork and the bolts go through through the fork and into the thing here, into the caliper. All right, now mine says in my service manual to use medium strength uh, bonding agent, locking agent. So I use the blue Loctite. Um, also very popular with people is to use some copper or nickel anti-seize on these uh, bolts here, because these are steel bolts going into aluminum parts. But uh, I do that on other bikes if it doesn't say to use Loctite, but my manual says to use it, so I'm using Loctite. Uh, the other thing to hook up is the uh, brake line clamp. So I put some blue Loctite on those and just tighten those up to hand tight. Uh, these I've torqued with the torque wrench to the factory spec. Uh, the KOX, it's uh, 25 foot-pounds. Um, and the hose, make sure you route the hose properly. The hose should run on the inside of the fork like that. Okay, so we got the caliper on. We got our hose clamp here on there. I've got the lower pinch bolts for the forks are loose and the upper ones are tight to the factory torque spec. And then, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get ready to put the wheel on, okay? So my wheel, <coughs> oops, that's the Loctite I use. Oops, get it in here. I get this blue Loctite stick uh, stuff instead of the uh, liquid tubes. That stuff's fine too, this just keeps it from dripping. It's a little less messy to work with. Anyways, my wheel, there's my axle, okay? These are the spacers from my wheel. So, what the hell is this camera doing? Uh, I'm gonna clean them up and uh, grease all that stuff, clean the axle. Uh, if I look at my front uh, wheel itself here, okay, the spacers pop in those there with the oil seals and there's bearings behind those. I'm just gonna clean all that shit up and uh, put some fresh uh, Bell Ray waterproof grease and everything in there and then i'm going to mount the tire and just hand tighten uh the uh axle bolt and then we'll we'll set about aligning the front and everything here in a few minutes so i'm going to get this front tire on i'll be back all right so the front wheel is on um <clears throat> i greased the axle and everything i pushed it through okay now one thing is before i put this uh nut on i take some cleaning agent like rubbing alcohol or if you have guns like slip 2000 and I get all the grease off the threads because you don't want to torque something with grease on the threads you won't get the correct value so then I just hand tighten uh, this nut on nothing's torqued down nothing's tight there's still a little wiggle and play and I also uh, if you you have a cotter pin I align the hole for the cotter pin so it faces forward so I will be putting the cotter pin in through the back and then folding the ends over this way. So if I hit a rock or something, it'll just smush those back more and not damage the head of the cotter pin. Anyways, the wheel is on, but it's, it's on loose, okay? Again, these are, the upper bolts are tightened to torque spec and these are, are loose. Now, I know you're thinking, Steve, what the fuck? These are conventional forks. What difference does it make to have the lower pinch bolt loose? Uh, 
Well, not everybody has those. So just generically, if you use this procedure to align your forks, um, it'll work on any kind of forks. So I just always do it the same. All right, so what has to happen next is I have my torque wrench here already set up and ready to go. Um, I am going to get on the bike and I'm gonna hold it as straight and level as possible. I'm gonna hold the front brake and I'm gonna bounce the suspension like five or six times, all right? These bottom bits here on these forks will rotate around and align themselves. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do that and everything should be in alignment. Then I'm gonna tighten the uh, lower pinch bolts to spec. And then once I have those done, uh, I'm gonna do my bounce thing again and I'm gonna finish off tightening the uh, bolt here and the nut for the uh, front tire and then I'll put my cotter pin in. And when we have that done, uh, everything's done. Just wanna inspect your front end and make sure everything's in alignment, double check all your work and then you should be good. All right, so I'm gonna go do that. All right, that's it. I have got my cotter pin in, uh, the front wheel is torqued to spec. Uh, the last thing to do is to align your fork boots if you have them so that your drain holes are on the rear and then tighten up the little retaining clamp and that should be it. Everything should be torqued from the fork cap bolts, upper and lower pinch bolts to hold it, your tires on, everything's done. Uh, I think I forgot to mention uh, in the last little clip that when I'm holding the brake and doing that bounce thing, I'm actually sitting on the bike and then I, I bounce it a bunch of times holding the brake and then I, I keep holding the brake and I'm, I'm on the bike and I just reach around to the front and tighten those, those final bolts, keeping everything as level as possible. But that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not too hard to do or anything. Hopefully this helps you out if it's your first time doing it. I'll see you.